Hello. Ethan. Is Kelly Hansen. Kelly, how are you, buddy? God, great. How are you? Fantastic. I saw the 818 number pop up, and I was like, ah, uh, that's L.A. That's got to be Kelly. So I was right. <laughs> You're right. So how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Thank you. Are you ready to kick off this uh, gigantic farewell tour that you guys are just going to crush it with? We're just about ready. Not quite, but just about. So tell me, I know... Lots of times there are these really cool stories, like if you look at uh, Judas Priest and Ripper Owens or Arnell Pineda and Journey, and there are these people that were just huge fans and ended up joining their dream band. It's not the same story you had, not that you weren't a huge fan of Foreigner, but you kind of came about it in a slightly different way through other bands before you ever got with uh, with Mick and Foreigner. How did you get the gig? Well, you know, I, I had, I had uh, some... Uh, notoriety because of my previous band Hurricane. We had top uh, 30 single, top 35 single I think it was. And we had toured Europe and the States and all that kind of stuff. And, and But that had been, uh, that ended in 1990 or 91. And I was uh, that's when kind of a different kind of voice was popular a more growly kind of earthy kind of voice and I'm kind of this high tenor and and my voice was just not popular then, so I had to take some time out. And I was, I knew I was going to have to ride out this cycle because music is cyclical. So I was, I was producing and engineering and writing and doing artist development and all that kind of stuff for like almost ten years. And um, at a point, I, it was, a, it was a, it became a, a point of diminishing returns. I was working a lot harder, making a lot less money, and because you know technology was making it. A, uh, able for you to make a record in your bedroom so production budgets were dropping and so on so I was I kind of said to myself you know I really need to go back to what I do best and that's being a lead singer and I said uh, and I had missed a couple of gigs that no one even called me for and I was like oh my paradigm is different now I need to work differently so I decided to be proactive and never say no and I was out there researching and I was on the web and I heard about a charity gig that Mick had done with a couple of guys at Santa Barbara. And I said, is this a new Mick Jones project or is this a foreigner project? I don't, I didn't know the status of the band. Lou had left in 2002, this was 2005. So I got in touch with management and found out they were looking for a new voice and I was looking to change what I was doing. And, uh, and we got together, we jammed for an hour. Uh, I went home, they called me an hour later and they said, listen, we're, we're booking gigs for this weekend. Can you start rehearsing tomorrow? So I had like five days to rehearse and the rest is history. It definitely is. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are, since you're not obviously Lou Graham, who has a very iconic voice, although you, you can hit the notes exactly like he can. So uh, good job on that one. But, you you know, you've been with the band in many ways longer than uh, any of the so-called original members. And a lot of the other guys in the band, Jeff Pilsen and some of the other ones, have also been a part of Foreigner longer than the originals. So you guys are really the body of Foreigner now. What was it that made you guys want to hang it up? Was it mixed health? Was it everybody looking to maybe try something fresh? Was it uh, let's just go have a huge, gigantic, year-long blowout party? What What was the impetus behind that one? Well, I mean, we, uh, we've been touring nonstop nine months a year for the past almost 19 years, almost 20 years. And um, that's very difficult on your home life. And, and unless you're like some kind of road dog and you need to be on the road. And I mean, I just got married a couple of years ago. And um, this wonderful catalog of songs gets harder and harder to sing. And, and I refuse to do these songs less than they deserve. Uh, not only for the songs, but for the fans. And um, I, I don't want to be one of those guys that's out there doing something that they shouldn't be doing anymore and, and doing it less than. So I said, you know, let's do this and let's go out when we're strong. Um, let's make that statement for this band, the songs and the legacy. And that's kind of what it's about for me. I, I, I have other interests. I want to do other things. I want to think about the next chapter of my life. And um, so, you know, it's a lot of variables that came together to, to make that decision. You said that you are more of a, a tenor. I'm actually closer to a baritone. So for me, singing foreigner songs just ain't happening. But when I saw <laughs> you guys live last time you were here in the Tampa Bay area, um, you hit every note possible. Is it getting, as you mentioned a little bit, I guess, is it getting harder to hit some of those? Because I think Lou's probably more of an alto, don't you think? 
Um, you know, I don't know, you know, how to judge Lou's voice, but I know that for me, it seems like I have to, um, seems like I have to give up something every year to maintain the status quo of my voice. I mean, these songs are hard to sing when you're in your twenties. Uh, and, and I'm going to be 62 next month. And, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a 24 seven concern taking care of my voice and making sure that the, that the show is the pinnacle of my day and that my voice is at its best for, you know, that couple of hours. And, and it's a, it's a huge commitment from me and it just, it does get a little bit harder. It's just harder to do every year. And, you know, that plays into the whole decision. So what is your, uh, I guess, pre-show or vocal sort of warm-up routine? As a fellow singer, I've I treated my voice like crap for years, smoking and, and all the other stuff. I don't anymore. But what is? how do you keep yourself in, in prime shape when you're about to go out on stage? Do you have, like, certain, you know, hot tea and lemon, just a whole lot of warm-ups? How do you take care of that? I, um, you know, I, tr- I try to make sure I get enough sleep. Um, I have to eat early in the day. I don't want to really have a meal before the show. Uh, and then I do a series of warm-ups that are just basically s- gently hitting notes and uh, then just stop, and then I'll wait five or ten minutes, then I'll hit like you know a half step or a step higher and just kind of slowly warm up that way. I'm not a fan of doing scales and doing all this kind of stuff. It's just, to me, it's uh, there's only so much tread on the tire, and if you're doing an hour-long warm-up, I don't think that that's really beneficial. You just want to get your vocal cords uh, to have blood going through them and make sure they're lubricated. And that's really what it's about for me. Uh, you know, I'm, physically, I'm, I do a, a whole stretching routine that I do before I go out there. And, and, and that's kind of basically it. I, I, but I do have to think about the whole day, not just, you know, when we get to the gig. So uh, smoke and meth and shots of whiskey not on the table then? Uh, maybe smoke and whiskey and shots of meth. <laughs> I bet it works even better that way. Um, as as we talked about just a bit ago, you're just about to hit 20 years with the band, but you guys are going to, I guess, sadly not hit that mark because you joined in 2005 and you're going to wrap up the tour in 2024. It's still a huge marker to almost hit 20 years. What are you doing on this farewell tour to sort of celebrate that and celebrate the band in itself? Do you have some surprises, some special guests coming up? I am... Um, <laughs> we it's evolving and i think it will continue to evolve as we go through it um as we've always said the door is open to any original members you know and i think we're going to be seeing that uh, this year of course and um i don't know who's going to come out of the woodwork and say they you know hey can i you know hang out with guys maybe play a song or two and that'll be fun and that'll be interesting and i like the spontan spontaneity of that uh, of that idea and uh, so we'll see it's a uh, you know, we're going to try to do different stuff and try to, uh, you know, stretch a little bit. And that's one of the great things about doing the, the residency in Las Vegas is that um, we get to kind of stay set up and we get to kind of stretch our legs a little bit. And and uh, so th- who knows what's going to happen? Some things we're doing, but some things we don't know yet uh, because it's going to evolve. And you and uh, uh, Lou Graham, despite what some people on the Internet say, because everything on the Internet is true, you and Lou Graham are actually friends. You've sung together on stage before. And while we don't want to spill any beans, there's some secrets. That would definitely be a huge possibility that Lou could pop in on a show here and there. I mean, that's completely up to Lou. Uh, um, like I said, you know, all, all the previous members are always welcome on stage. And uh, and I, I, I love what he's accomplished with this band and with these songs. And uh, you know, that's always a, 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 a wonderful thing that happens. Tell us about the Vegas residency. Do they put you up in the penthouse? Does everybody have like their own super suite for a month or two while you're doing that? Oh, yeah. I'm in the super swanky 17 bedroom quarter mile square. <laughs> you know, Do you have a bowling alley? There. I got clouds in my room. It's great. <laughs> Well, we are super excited for you guys to come back through town. Uh, like I said last time, I saw the band literally close your eyes, and it is the original Foreigner. The same sound is coming at you. The same songs are coming out. You've got the tour with Loverboy. Are you friends with those guys before this tour came together, you and Mike Reno or any of you guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've played with them many times, and they're great. There's going to be a lot, a lot of hits on stage, Ben, with Loverboy and us, so that should be really cool. Hey, by the way, 
Are we going to talk about this uh, four pack promotion that we're doing for the for the show? One hundred percent. That's about where I was going to go. We have a special four pack. Do you want to tell uh, everybody about it? Well, I'll t- if I'm wrong, correct me. But uh, what we're going to do for the uh, for th- for the show um, July 9th in Tampa is we're going to sell a four pack of tickets for one hundred seven dollars and thirty cents. Is that correct? Is that uh, real? That's the info I have. Yeah, a four pack. And these are um, just so people know, these aren't like lawn nosebleed seats. These are reserved seats. You actually have your own space, and you can get right. four tickets for a hundred and seven dollars and change for the farewell tour. I like it. I like it too. I was coming up with some ideas. Uh, we should call it maybe the uh, the farewell four pack or the foreigner four pack. Um, maybe the urgent the sale. Farewell four pack. Foreigner farewell four pack. It's an urgent sale. Um, and then I was thinking, <laughs> don't be a jukebox zero. Be a jukebox hero and get your whole family tickets to foreigner. And if you get these tickets, it'll feel like the first time you got that four pack. <laughs> You know, uh, I got to share this with you because I think I read this last time. I did a little intro for you guys when you were here last time on stage. I don't know if you heard it, but I wrote out an entire meme, including as many foreigner song titles as um, I could figure out. And let me see if I can pull that up and I want to read it to you because I I think it's hilarious. Um, It's this jukebox hero was waiting for a girl like you because I want to know what love is and I'm hot blooded. But that was yesterday. And now the damage is done because you're cold as ice and it's urgent that this dirty white boy finds someone new. So it feels like the first time again and stop these head games that give me double vision. You know, sadly, that's not the first time I've heard that kind of thing. (laughs) It does not feel like the first time. (laughs) <laughs> we could make a foreigner song title comments all day long, my friend. That's right. That's right. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Can't wait for the farewell tour. July 9th, Tampa Amp. The four-pack of tickets is a limited sale. It's only through this weekend. So if you want to get down on those tickets, um, we'll have all the details at 1073theequal.com. Kelly Hansen, thank you so much for calling in. Can't wait to see you in July, buddy. Thank you. Take it easy. Have a good one, my friend.